Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's theCUBE, covering EMC World 2015. Brought to you by EMC, Brocade, and VCE. Hi, we're back at EMC World. This is Dave Vellante. Ryan Peterson here is the Chief Strategist for Solutions at EMC, focused on the big data space. Ryan, great to see you again. Great to see you today. So, <laughs> what a show. Uh, no kidding. Where do we start? I, um, let's focus on what's going on in analytics and, and big data. It's, it's been an area that we've focused on, as you know, yep. many, many years. Um, you guys really hopped in, leaned in, as Paul Moritz would say, full force the market sort of came right to you. Yep. So give us the update. What are you seeing? What are customers telling you? Yeah, I think the, the big change is that uh, the distribution battle has been going, you know, obviously ODP has made that battle even maybe bigger to some extent, and uh, you know, the, I, I go out to see customers a lot. I've seen probably a few hundred customers in the last year or two. And uh, what I think is shifting is the, the thinking that one distribution is going to win this. I used to walk in the door, I'd see people, they'd all be wearing the same shirt. Maybe they're Cloudera shop, or a Hortonworks shop, or a Pivotal shop, whatever it might be. That, that's shifting. That whole world is now going to, well hold on, the application providers that are, are choosing their distro to work with. You know, for example, Microsoft and Hortonworks, and uh, Cloudera with BAE systems, we heard from them the other day. These, these uh, application providers are creating solutions on top of distributions, and just like Oracle Database and Microsoft SQL and MySQL and all these different databases have existed inside of the same infrastructure, they all do SQL. Customers are starting to have to uh, think about how they're going to handle multiple distributions in their environment. So that's an interesting premise. Let's talk about that. So in the early days, you had obviously Cloud Era, one distro. The world was really simple. Yep. And then everybody started introducing mm -hmm. a distro. Um, well, MapR was pretty early on, yep. but you know Fujitsu, Intel. When Disco, Pivotal, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's three or four others. Silicon Angle, I think, had a distribution. <laughs> and uh, so now you've seen consolidation there, which mm -hmm. everybody sees. Okay, that's a sign that the world's going to a winner-take-all world. But you don't you don't see that. No, I think that there's uh, there's no there's no, there's not going to be a winner-take-all. And historically, we see this, right? Uh, databases certainly there was never a, a winner-take-all. I mean, certainly Oracle did really well in that space. Microsoft did great in that space. Uh, open source products like My, My, uh, MySQL done really well in that space. Uh, but Red Hat, SUSE, look at all the Unix distributions. Certainly, there was some that uh, didn't do well and went out. But uh, yeah, you know, Isilon, one of our best products, runs on BSD now. I mean, uh, different Unix distributions for different reasons, requirements. And I don't think Hadoop's going to be any different. So, I, I'm fond of saying that the it's not winner take all, but the first guy, you know, number one makes the most dough, number two makes some good dough, number three makes a little bit of dough, kind of breaks even, yeah. hangs out, and then everybody else, you know, sort of loses money and can't justify the business case and eventually gets out. But the, most markets like this can support three. Yeah. So that feels about right. Yeah, I think you so. You got Cloudera, Hortonworks, and MapR. Mm -hmm. Those are kind of the big three. IBM, you know, maybe if IBM, if IBM wants to fund its own distro, it can, it can afford to do that, but yeah. who cares, yeah. right? I think uh, some unique consolidation in that space is obviously Intel consolidating into Cloudera. Yeah. ODP saying basically we're going to standardize the back end of Hortonworks, Pivotal, and IBM, and, and some others. But, but that created a new, another territory, and then you've got MapR, kind of on their own, but in any case, you've got those three different uh, major distribution platforms now. And they all do things a little bit differently, and as a result, uh, they, they have different SQL engines, for example. Yeah, so the ODP piece is interesting. I mean, you know, Pivotal, I always felt like, okay, Pivotal is, gonna, is getting into the distro business to learn, right, and you know, see what it can do. Maybe it'll hit a home run. Uh, it, it, it seemed to be, always be kind of a Hail Mary approach, but it, it made sense. Yeah. Uh, it's okay, and so then you get to the point of, okay, it no longer makes sense. The money to be made here is up the stack. Right. Let's consolidate. <clears throat> With, with Hortonworks, obviously, Rob Bearden was on the other day, obviously he's thrilled. Yep. We had Mike Olson on the other day, he's like, who needs this? <laughs> right. So, my feeling is let the, market, the middle of those guys go, let the market oh. decide, right? I mean, that's yep. kind of where you are, yeah. right? The market's Dealing gonna, arms. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, my, and my position is, how do we maintain flexibility so that all these different distributions can, can have the same uh, argument, they can, they can fight, but at the same time, a customer doesn't have to replicate their content for this data lake and that data lake and the third and fourth or fifth data lake. We want to create a centralized infrastructure that allows all of those different distributions to access that content so that any application vendor who may have chosen their horse 
for example, maybe they chose the horse of Impala. Maybe they maybe they chose the the horse of uh, of Embari. One of those different components is going to be interesting for an application vendor. And if you wanted to, if you want to buy that application vendor's application, they're gonna they're gonna want to go with their distribution. Well, that's a that's an interesting example. I mean, there's room for Impala. There's room for Embari. People yeah. are going e e e you know, each direction. You look at what MapR has done. Mm -hmm. They've obviously got some traction in the marketplace. So I think I think your scenario is right on. Mm -hmm. I mean. It, you, you use Unix, you know Linux. Yeah. Very good examples. Um, it, history tells the future. Right? Yeah, the, it, it 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 pretty much does. Do you feel like this market is larger mm -hmm. and can more easily, let's say, sustain three? That my scenario, uh, third guy, kind of maybe doesn't make so much. Actually, could in this in this world. I'll say something somewhat provocative, and I know that some of the people at EMC I've had. I was just talking to my good friend Matt Calger, and he, he was uh, disagreeing with me on this, but. I feel like Hadoop is, uh, is going past the analytics business. We all talk about Hadoop equals analytics, Hadoop equals, I really look at Hadoop as a major platform, maybe even the data center operating system of the future. You know, everything's used to be divisible. You take an application, you divide it in two, divide it in three, divide it in four, and that's how you know NetApp and VMAX and VNX and all these other kind of block or, or, or uh, file systems had, had scaled. It's been uh, open to the volume, another volume, another volume, and the same with uh, systems. Uh, Exchange Server is a great example. After some number of users, some number of emails, I got to break that up and create a second one, a third one, a fourth one, and it breaks it, it breaks it into divisible format. As we've done a scale out platforms now, that has completely changed the architecture. And as a result, customers are redefining their entire data center based on those requirements. So, looking at uh, at, at scale out storage, scale out compute with Hadoop, scale out memory, Spark and now scale out applications, also part of the Hadoop ecosystem in many cases, but then look at like Cloud Foundry being that application development framework that's a scale out platform. All of those kind of components in a stack make it so it's extremely flexible. And, and think about things like SQL on Spark with the latency metrics you're seeing on memory and DSSD's capabilities around the space. Do we think that maybe uh, Oracle's going to get run from their money and the, the, the scale up database will actually go to a scale out database? I think the whole world's changing around, uh, around data center. Well, so, how are people using Hadoop? I mean, our sort of research indicates that the initial uh, foray into Hadoop was the sort of reduction on investment in the traditional data warehouse. Mm -hmm. Even though, you ask anybody what's going on in your big data, mm -hmm. the two things that they absolutely point to that, 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 that support the big data initiatives are the traditional EDW mm -hmm. and <coughs> ETL. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think, uh, frankly, the, the, uh, the EDWs came out with a lot of cost. Uh, certainly, the benefits were there to justify that cost. But as customers started realizing, you know, I don't need to move the data into the EDW to do an ETL job, thus saving myself a lot of cost per terabyte. I can just put it in Hadoop and let it do the work and then spit out the results to EDW. That, that became a really good justification for starting out Hadoop. But again, I think all this stuff was just justifications. It was the way to get in the door and get things started. Yeah, right, so that's my point. Now, so now what? So that's sort of, <laughs> yeah. I think you, you agree, right? The, initially, it was like, let's save some dough, right. this is great take some of the air out of our EDW because we're chasing ships and it's a bloody nightmare. Right. Now what? How so, do we get more return on this? What are you seeing? You know, I had a great conversation with Doug Cutting. I've had some great conversations on the, the Hortonworks side as well, and it's been, uh, I, I think this is what's happening next. E ETL got started, analytics grew it out further, because now I can do some of the things that maybe uh, Teradata or Netiza were doing before on Hadoop directly, but the, the biggest thing is scale out applications. Applications are being built that consume common data sets. Great example might be uh, taking a, uh, a, a telco tower, Wi-Fi tower, or a wireless tower, and I'm, I'm, I'm getting all the CDR and XDR content. Well, you know what, that data looks the same. They're, they're the same towers across multiple different providers. The information all looks the same. I'm consuming it the same. So why can't I build a common application? EMC's actually been building some applications. Uh, BAE Systems built an application around this. It sits on top of Hadoop, starts automatically processing that data, it gives you a, a result, and that I think is the next step, is we're seeing application providers build scale out Hadoop-based applications that are going to automatically consume that content, and we're going to see more and more and more of that over the next few years. I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's taken a while, right? Oh, yeah. Mike Olson, I think, at uh, Hadoop World 2011 said this is the year of the application. Right. And, you know, four it's been or five a couple years, years later, yeah, we're still yeah. talking about it. And he said, look, we had to build out the infrastructure, and maybe I was a little bit o over my skis on that prediction, but, Ultimately, it's happening, and that's that's where. So we've just come out with a new scenario on our um, on our big data forecast. I'd love to get your opinion on this. Mm -hmm. 
you look at big data and where the spend is, it's all services, like 40% of the market's services. And right. yeah, that's not scale. Yeah. It, services don't scale, so we sort of, you know, started to think about this and forecast it out and said, look, the future is software. Yeah. And software today is quite a small piece of the pie relative to the rest of the business, largely because of open source, but mm -hmm. we think that's going to flip. We think that software is going to overtake services. Now maybe it's going to take five, seven, 10 years, mm -hmm. but software is the growth engine. That's the only way this thing's going to scale. So, so let's go back on history, history again. Yeah. Windows 1.0 came out. Yeah. I remember that, I was alive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still pretty young, but I was alive. And I remember it being really flat. There wasn't anything really there, and you, you played with visualization things, a lot of programming involved, a lot of services involved in those early adopter customers. They had to figure out, how do I use Windows? Same thing happened with uh, with your iPhone, the same thing happened with uh, with Android. New operating system comes out, you've got to uh, play with it, and a lot of services to build your own apps. But when somebody figures out, hey, you know what, That's the, that data set's the same as that data set, the, the customers are all looking for the same thing, the software company is going to build a common software that can handle multiple different applications. You're going to see a massive shift of spend away from the, the services side into the software side. Scale out applications are going to start controlling the data center. And as a result, you're going to see things like Hadoop and Cloud Foundry, really as a combination, I think, are going to scale out architecturally speaking across the entire environment to help handle applications and custom development against those systems. So Ryan, your, your role is strategy. Yep. What's your scope? Um, is it I've been focused heavily on big data, but I've got uh, all the vertical solution categories. So I've got media and entertainment, healthcare, life sciences. As you know, Hadoop has really been uh, prominent in those kind of early vertical spaces. Uh, we've got architects who spend time thinking about how can I really change healthcare? How can I change life sciences? How can I change surveillance, for example? And we really look at how, uh, the things we're saving people money, we're uh, making people new money. We really think that people need to change their thinking and mentality. And, and our guys really think about that process every single day. How can I make, save, or save lives? And, and we, we love, of course, the, the saving lives one is the most important in our mind. But at the same time, we got to make the company some money so that they can make afford. Making money's good too. You got to make some money yeah. so you can afford to can save you lives. you enjoy your life. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that we're going to save. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, it's funny. I, we, we have this uh, term, uh, life, liberty, and happiness. And pretty much all of these life, liberty, and happiness things can get tied back to, uh, whether it's life, I'm saving, saving lives, uh, liberty, we've, we've actually had uh, countries liberated by the use of things like Hadoop. Data usage to, to get into things like Arab Spring, incredible changes and in, in shift in economies. And then you have uh, uh, happiness. Well, you know what, we, we build uh, major movies on top of our platforms and we use uh, analytic tools to make that uh, process faster. Of course, we wouldn't have a life if it wasn't fun and enjoyable. So we think that what we're involved in is life, liberty, and happiness across all of the solution categories that me and my team support. Yeah, and I think, you know, the famous quote by Jeff Hammerbacher that the best minds of my generation are trying to figure out how to get people to click on ads, that's, that's the early Hadoop days. That's yeah. really changed. Somebody asked me, it was even last summer at a conference, you know, when are we going to see, you know, this big data affect our lives? It's happening. It's right. happening all around us. You guys talk about the information generation, which is good marketing, but there's some really interesting tidbits in there and sort of futurist look at and yeah, what the world's going to look like. I, I've got a session just after this. I'm, I'm going to speak to uh, hopefully the IT leadership track. It's a bunch of CIOs and, I, and my, my pitch is, chief information officers need to start thinking like chief innovation officers. And if they just simply do what the, uh, the company tells them to do, then they're not going to allow for the process of change and com complete conversion of their business. Every business out there is at risk because of what's available for their big data processes. Well, that's, you know, it's an interesting topic, and innovation's not going to come from doing a bunch of non-differentiated heavy lifting. It's going to be by combining technologies and creating new business models and, right. uh, and changing the world, as you're yeah, saying. Well, data sets are everywhere. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to me, big data is not about your data and your company. You might have a lot of data, uh, but it's when you start adding external sensors, start bringing in Twitter feeds, bring in LinkedIn information. I mean, the World Wide Web has tons more data than you've got in your environment. That's big data. How do you utilize those things to, to provide a new answer for your organization? And some of those things might save money, they might make money, they might save the well, save lives. And you've got solutions in your title, so now, based on what you just mentioned, let's talk governance, and you got, there's so many opportunities for you all. Right, We're, and that's, what, that's the, the next big thing for us, is to really collapse all of those capabilities and requirements, make sure we're providing the strongest, most stable, most governed uh, cataloging processes, so that as you're bringing data into the data lake, we can make sure that you know where it is. I, I, equate, I equate it to Legos. You know, remember the old day, you get, a, you get a Lego box, you pour it out on the ground, you just start building something. 
Well, and that's kind of what Hadoop is, right? You yeah. just kind of build something, you figure out what's going to come out of it. No schema. Yeah, <laughs> but, but really what you need to do is, is take all of those, those pieces and say, you know, I've got, I've got red one by twos, I've got some, some blue two by sixes, oh, I've got a couple of Lego wings. Hey, maybe I can make an airplane because I've got wings. Start building those things up. But if you don't have wings, you're not going to build an airplane. So you catalog what you have in your environment and also what's outside of your environment, how do you know what you can build and what you can create? And, and we need, we need uh, chief innovation officers to start thinking, what can I create? not what do I have to create. Yeah, right, and then connecting to APIs and so many sources of public data now that you can leverage. It's just a, we're living in amazing times, as Joe, Joe Chuchi says, interesting times. Completely Ryan Peterson, really appreciate you coming to theCUBE. Great session, good ideas, thought-provoking, as always, thank you. Thanks, Dave, appreciate it. All right, keep it right there, everybody. This is Dave Vellante, we'll be back. We're live at EMC World 2015, this is theCUBE.